Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I am here at the Uradev Conference in Malmö, Sweden, and I have here with me Roy Osherov, who is uh, the author of The Art of Unit Testing and who works at TypeMock, uh, which is a company that produces unit testing tools for .NET and C++. So uh, welcome, Roy, and thank you very much for coming. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, so I'm very excited to be able to do another pair programming session with uh, Roy. Roy. Um, it tells me he doesn't know Java, hasn't worked with Java in quite a while. Well, I do know Java very, very basically, just enough to uh, to hurt myself. Okay, so uh, we're going to have fun. Um, so last time when we left off, we had just finished getting the spike working, the spike code working for uh, testing the UI. And now I think that it's time to try to get that spike code put into uh, the production code. And I explained what was going on to Roy before we started, and um, you you had an interesting perspective on that. Yeah, um, uh, I was kind of um, uh, afraid to start doing TDD on UI. Uh, UI is where I usually stop doing TDD. If the point of the current exercise was to add some whiz-bang to the UI, this is where I would usually stop and just add the features without any tests, because this is usually the part that scares me the most about maintainability. Yeah. Of unit tests. Yeah, and I think you're not alone in that. Um, but uh, I would I would really like to try to do it anyway. Um, I think if we do it well, I think the maintainability will, will be pretty good. Well, we can just dive in and see what happens. Okay, let me show you um, let me show you what we have in terms of the existing test code. Um, what we're doing is we're creating a test bed. Uh, JFrame is the well. Let me just go ahead and run this. Um, so. If I run the test there, um, it pops up the frame in the background. It is it is slow, although right now it looks like it's spinning up. It's running a lot slower than usual. In in the setup method, you're basically creating. Is this, is this this is a spike? Okay, so yeah, this is a spike, but it is an act, this is a spike of how you do testing of this UI code. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for some reason, it's just hanging though, which is interesting because it did not do that last time. Uh, one thing I've learned from doing these videos is that if it can possibly go wrong, <laughs> it does. So um, I am not sure what's going on here. Obviously, Eclipse is telling us not to do UI testing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe so. Um, wow, it is it is just died a horrible death. So let me I'm gonna have to bring up the process manager. Uh, it's official. Let's see. There we go. Um, let's see if I can find. There we go. So that was unexpected. Let me try that again. There. That's what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and what that's doing is uh, it's instantiating the window, which mm -hmm. is a JFrame. It's creating this table model. Swing uses an MVC model and um, adding some some dummy data to it. I, I'm interested in the, is zero uh, comma three. Is that the number of rows? Yeah, that's columns? rows and columns. Mm -hmm. Zero rows, three columns. Okay. Um, it's putting some dummy data in, and then um, uh, adding a table to the frame with that model mm -hmm. as the uh, content. Then it's telling the frame to be visible, it's resizing it, you know, telling it to pack everything in. So why do you have to even set it visible, even in the spike? Uh, I'm not sure that you do. Um, when I was doing the spike, uh, since I'd work in 15 minute increments, uh, the spike isn't 100% done, I didn't explore every possibility, I just got it working. Um, my understanding is that a lot of the internals of swing don't get set up properly until you actually mark it visible. Mm -hmm. So what is the pack me uh, method does? Pack is uh, going to resize. It's going to basically try to fit everything into the most layout. optimal space. It does mm -hmm. your layout. Pack is not necessary, um, but it it does the layout that you it, need. It's a just in case. Yeah. Really. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. But be, uh, what worries me is that if you want to run unit tests on something that's UI and you make the UI visible and you want these tests at some point to be automated on a build server that is headless, mm -hmm. um, it cannot show anything 
really. It has to be run from a command line. What, uh, wouldn't it get stuck yeah, on the build server? I'm not really worried about that because that's not the situation I have here. Mm -hmm. I'm not running a build server. I don't plan to. So uh, yeah, I'm not concerned about it. But the point of unit tests at, 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 at the end would be to run it on a build server. Uh, again, that's not what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not how I run unit tests. Okay, you don't run unit tests on a build server at some point, like I don't in a use, company. I generally don't use uh, automated build. Uh, I don't use continuous integration servers. I do manual continuous integration. When you work pr uh, alone on your own project? No, no, always. Always, in, yeah. even in a company? Yeah. Wow, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, we do things very differently, I think. But yeah. let's, let's okay. stay focused on this. Okay. Um, so the window gets set up. Mm -hmm. uh, we put the table in there. And then what I'm doing is I'm checking to see that uh, the rows are alternating alternating colors because that's the actual code that I want to add to the production code is uh, every other row I want to have a different color background mm, so that it's okay. easier to read. So this is some UI polish is what, what I'm working on right here. So you're checking each and every column, every, each and every cell basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're checking that this is the color and pale blue, since this is a spike, I don't have a problem with all these hard-coded values. Right, right. But in a unit test, I might probably... Yeah, but we're not there, yeah, so don't okay. worry about it. Okay. Um, so, and here's the code that actually checks the background of the cell. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we get something called a cell renderer out of the table, um, which gives us the component which is being rendered, and then we can ask the component for its background. So that's how it works. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I would like to get working on the production code. Okay, so the spike proves that it can be done. It can be done. How is the way you want to write the unit test different from the spike? Um, I think we'll start with what's in the spike and then uh, just try to make the code higher quality. Mm -hmm. So the main thing that's happening here that we're going to want to do in the production code is I've created a custom table object that does this alternating rows. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to want to do that. The other thing that's in here that we're going to definitely want to do is set up a test bed, which is rather than running the real application, we'll do just a window that holds our, our test table and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll have the same window being reused by multiple tests in the same class? Uh, possibly. Okay. Doesn't have to be. Um, so that's what I'd like to do. Okay, right. uh, one thing that I, I would probably do is I would actually move the custom table that I'm using, the helper one, mm -hmm. into the same uh, location. I don't know if that's possible in Java. Uh, to the same class file where my tests exist, so I don't have to switch between multiple files to CD Helper. Well, let's um, let's go ahead and do the production code mm -hmm. rather than critiquing the spike code. Okay. So, um, so here we are in the UI. Um, right now, the application class is a is basically a bit of a stub code to mm -hmm. make the application run. I've shown you, I've already shown you what it looks like. Uh, when we run the app, so this is the app. Um, this is all being instantiated inside of application, uh, this application class. This class is not being tested yet. Mm -hmm. um, and all of this is basically just hard-coded values. Um, and that's OK for now. The, this will all get replaced eventually, but that's not the purpose. So right now in here, we are using just a normal J table. And what I'd like to do is create a new table class that has those alternating colors and do that in a test-driven manner. Mm -hmm. So you want to create the table class or the code that creates the table class in a te test-driven manner? Uh, do you want to create the... You, do you want to replace this function, the function called table, in a TDD manner? Or just the class that you will create later? Just the class that it will create. Okay. Yeah. So I want to have a, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a table class that extends JTable that is just like JTable except that the rows are alternating awesome. colors. Awesome. So, um, would you like to drive or would you like me to drive? Um, you drive because I don't remember how to do stuff Okay. in Java yet. All right, so let's go ahead and I'll put this in the UI package. That seems like the most straightforward place to do it. And uh, what should we call this table class? Are you not starting with a test first? Yes, I am, but I, I name my, te my test class after my uh, production class. And you're putting it in the same package? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if you've talked about this, but why? Um, that's just the way I like to do it. Okay. Uh, you don't have a problem with mixing the tests and the production code? No, I start the test with an underscore, so they sort to the top. Yeah, that's nice. 
Okay, so how would you name this? This is the test class now? Uh, well, the test is, there's a, there's a sort of a standard pattern that I follow. Mm -hmm. So the test class is going to be named the same as the production class. Without, with the word test at the end? With oh. the word test at the end and an underscore at the beginning. So what's the name of the class to be, to be written? That was the question. Uh, that's a good question then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> recursive, in a way. Um, alternating uh, table. Um, alternating row table. Okay. Now, um, I think this is going to be the, the standard table. So another option, we could, we could call it something like a ledger table. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. To more ref so rather than being about the implementation of the table, we could name it after the purpose of the table. Okay. Um, so, but I'm I'm okay with either way. Uh, well, we could always rename it later. Yeah. So let's let's start with this. Okay. So I'm just going to try to get uh, some basic. Make sure this works. And we're going to need to run all of our tests. So you're just testing that you can run the test. Yeah, yeah. I always start out that way. And I did just notice. Um, let me go and make that work. Um, it is running the spike test, and that's a that's a sort of a glitch as a result of having the spikes in here. I'm going to just tell it to ignore that test for now, and. Uh, I'll make a note to come back and fix that properly in the future. So let's see. Uh, yeah, we need to move the spikes out. I'm not going to yeah. do that with you here. That's okay. Uh, I'll just do that in the future sometime. Um, let's see. So we don't need that right now. Or that, or that, or that. Okay. So there we've got uh, just a basic test working. Yeah. So I usually start with finding a really good name for the test, and then I'd know how to write it. Mm -hmm. So what's the simplest test we could write that proves that something's missing? I don't know, but I'm noticing a problem here. Mm -hmm. That uh, look spike test that I just told it to ignore. Oh, I told it to ignore the wrong thing. Um, I'm also seeing that that test is hanging again, which concerns me. It's hanging me. because not, is, there an, uh, is there an after that closes the form? Yeah. It just says it's visible. Does it really close? As, I don't know. Uh, that's something that I was worried about. I never, I've never had this problem before where it's not, uh, not actually closing it down. Um, I think it was, it's your special presence <laughs> that is, that's bringing us to that, to I that do, point. I do, I do make um, things work or unwork. So let's, I'm going to make a note, hopefully, um, the problem is that the teardown is still going to happen even though that test is ignored, isn't it? I don't know. Is there another test in that class? There is not another test in that class. In that case, no. Let's, uh, let's actually run it and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, it's not running it at all now. OK. Um, so I made a note to investigate that frame not closing issue. Uh, but again, I'd like to try to make some progress here. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so there's our test. So what, what, how would you like to start this? Well, um, I usually try to at least have the thing under test, the scenario, and the expected behavior. But the simplest test would be to, to actually say that uh, given that uh, uh, alternating row table, mm -hmm. then it exists with zero rows when you create it. Okay. That, that might make sense to me. So let's, um, uh, let's see. So we'll just start with uh, should exist with zero rows. And I try to add in the beginning uh, when created. Okay. Like uh, when I do this, then, uh, okay. then something should happen. All right. Um, so we're going to need an alternating row table. Um, alternating row table. And uh, that will forces to put in the class. But actually, believe it or not, we're already out of time. Really? Yeah, it goes really fast, which is why I was cutting you off a little bit earlier. Okay. Um, so I want to thank my guest here, uh, Roy Oshrov, and uh, I look forward to doing another session with you, hopefully. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I will see you next time.